Hello, hello, and welcome to 40 Entrepreneur Drive. My name is Kenya. Welcome to the channel. The other day, I made a video on coping with the isolation, fighting loneliness, and um, the thumbnail is titled Feeling Alone. It's not just you. And I promised a follow-up video on the topic of managing your loneliness while we are isolating in and sheltering in right now. And this is going to be uh, the website that I wanted to share with you guys. And so the website is called verywellmind.com, verywellmind.com. This came up in my own personal feed as I was browsing online. And you may have seen this already, but for those of you who have not, I wanted to share this with you. This is a very difficult time to be coping with isolation and loneliness. I mentioned in my other video, I am an introvert. I love spending time by myself. I am my own best company, but even I do struggle with um, some feelings of loneliness just because I'm not able to get out and mingle at my own uh, at my own choice. You know, being an introvert means you prefer to be alone, but it doesn't mean you always want to be alone. You just it's an introvert thing. <laughs> I can take people, but in small doses, but right now my doses are not even available. And so, yes, I came across this website, verywellmind.com. As you can see the title on the screen, I won't be saying it because it is, is a sensitive topic and uh, the YouTube algorithm does not really like too many words being used on this particular topic, but I did want to put a positive spin on it by letting you guys see what you can do about it, not just worry about it, but what you can do to be proactive about it. So how to cope with loneliness during certain times. That's just what I'll call it. We've got some infographics here of some yoga, some bubble baths and wine, um, some communication through digital means. And looks like someone is even getting to work. They may be doing some art. They may be doing some type of uh, graphics or something like that. So in this article, um, the things that are covered are loneliness and social isolation, keeping to a schedule, stay informed, stay active, do something meaningful, connect with others, find sources of comfort, create something, distract yourself, plan for the future, practice self-compassion, and coping as an older adult. Are you sure how to cope with loneliness during uh, this particular time? You could be self-isolating because you've caught what's going on, but there are other reasons why you have decided to stay indoors, elected to stay indoors. Whether you are inside due to suspected exposure, uh, staying home because you are in a high-risk category, or at home to help prevent the spread, you may find yourself unprepared for the feelings of loneliness that will likely to follow. So lots of people have stocked up on foods and supplies and different paper goods and different items. Those are things that we know to stock up for. But what about your emotional stock? Let's read on. While those with chronic illness may already be familiar with what it's like to face long periods of time alone at home, most of us are used to getting out daily. Even those who are retired or don't work usually make trips to run errands or visit friends. And to have all of that stop suddenly is jarring, to say the least. A 2017 systematic review of 40 studies from 1950 to 2016 published in the Journal of Public Health found a significant association between social isolation and loneliness and poorer mental health outcomes as well as cause mortality. For this reason, it's important to take care of your mental health during times of decreased social interactions. I told you guys in that other video, I even sometimes feel myself slipping just a little bit into some um, of the depression issues that I have had for most of my adult life. So I have to be really proactive against the, that slippage. It's normal to feel stressed when faced with staying indoors and interest, interacting less with people, especially when that's added to the underlying stress of worrying about whether you will catch something. These factors could increase your chances of developing a mental health issue like anxiety or depression. 
Uh, I also mentioned I had a coworker that uh, reached out to me and she said that she was having some anxiety issues and I don't think that was a norm for her. That was something completely new. While social distancing refers to avoiding large gatherings of people, staying a certain distance from others in public and only going out of the house for essentials, it can still start to feel a lot like cabin fever. You might also feel stigmatized if you are isolated because you have contracted uh, what's going on or you may be suspected of contracting it. What's the best way to go through this period of isolation? Well, there are many strategies that you can employ to ensure your well-being and good mental health. Most of these involve either finding ways to distract yourself, keeping busy, or finding ways to connect with others despite the circumstances. Personally, I would say that I am in that first category. Because I am an introvert and I do enjoy my alone time, staying busy is is extremely fulfilling to me. I've got stuff around the house that I could be doing, but I'm spending most of my time doing the things that I've always wanted to do. Make videos, editing, doing creative things. Um, I really enjoy that. And so that's what I'm doing. I'm keeping busy. Distractions work to help you avoid ruminating. Ruminating is a terrible, terrible thing. Ruminating is something I learned about in therapy while I was getting treatment for my depression. It's basically being stuck on a particular thought and it just, it's there. It's there or it comes and goes and it always creeps up on you and keeps coming back to haunt you. That's what ruminating is. You keep thinking about it, keep thinking about it, keep thinking about it. So it says here, distraction works to help avoid ruminating about everything that is wrong, which is a risk factor for becoming depressed. In this way, taking on little projects or finding other forms of distraction can help to keep your mood level. In contrast, staying social in non-traditional ways can help you feel less isolated and combat loneliness. If you're unable to go places or interact socially with many people at this time, you might be wondering what you can do. And below are some ideas on how to manage your feelings of loneliness during these times. Here's the first one. Keep to a schedule. Ooh, I am not good at at all with this. (laughs) About the only thing that is scheduled is my daily Bible readings, 7 a.m. Central, if you're interested. Other than that, I'm terrible with schedules. Even if you are isolated at home, try to keep a regular schedule as much as possible. While loneliness can feel like it will never end, try to make these days feel as normal as possible will help you to get through. Start each day with a plan of a few things that you will do. Keep a daily diary about how you are feeling and what you are doing and keep a symptom log. If you are managing illness, all of these tracking systems will help you feel like you are being productive about the situation. And speaking of schedules, I actually have on my laptop, I have a video paused that I need to get back to. I have been hanging out on a particular channel lately. The channel is called uh, Terry Wade Thompson. Terry Wade Thompson, I will put the link to the, uh, his channel in the description. And actually in today's live stream, he was talking about um, the bottom line your bottom line, like actually having a prepared idea of what you are going to do for the next day before you even go to sleep. Before you're going to sleep, you have a list, like basically a to-do list, um, but he calls it the bottom line up front. And it allows you to be prepared and productive the following day before you even wake up, you know what's you know what to expect. And so you won't just be sitting around restless and wondering what to do. So that... Um, Reading this part of the uh, reading this part of the article just reminded me of Mr. Thompson's uh, advice. So look for that link to his channel in the description. The next part here is to stay informed. In a 2020 study published in the International Journal of Environmental Research and Public Health, an online survey of 1,210 respondents from 194 cities in China showed that people who had up-to-date health information and advice on precautionary measures had better psychological functioning and resilience. Now, while you do not want to feed your anxiety and fear through constant updates about the state of things, you do want to keep up-to-date on the latest advice. See, that's that's different. You're focusing on the positive, not the negative. Focus on the, keep up-to-date on the latest advice and health information that may give you an edge when it comes to protecting your mental health 
and as a result reducing the impact of loneliness. Limit your media consumption to an extent. Watching too much news, reading too many articles, and consuming too much content can be overwhelming. You might decide to check the news twice a day, or you might decide to limit your time on social media if everyone is talking about what's going on. Make sure you seek sites that give factual information about what you can do to stay healthy, such as the CDC and the WHO. Here's another point. Stay active. Boy, oh boy, I sure do need to work on this part. (laughs) My butt fell asleep last week sitting in this chair making videos. While it's easy to focus exclusively on how to manage your mental health and loneliness directly during a crisis, we sometimes forget that our physical and mental health are delicately intertwined. And I also mentioned that exact same thing in last week's video and how to stay hopeful. Staying hopeful in difficult times. Don't let the news get you down. That is the title of the video and the thumbnail says stay hopeful. If you spend weeks of isolation not getting any exercise, this will have a detrimental effect on your ability to cope mentally. Below are some ideas of at-home activities that you can do to stay active. Practice Tai Chi, yoga or at-home, low-impact workouts by following YouTube videos. Exactly. If you're watching me right now or listening to me, you have access to YouTube because this is on YouTube. So you can be following along with um, some exercise videos and they don't have to be high impact. You see here it says Tai Chi. Tai Chi, uh, I think I might have tried it once, but it's a very relaxed, slow-moving Uh, type of exercise where it's really like slow motion stretching. That's what it looks like to me. It looks like slow motion stretching. And I think anybody can do Tai Chi. Uh, You can do limited uh, modified Tai Chi if you are in a chair or have limited mobility. It says here, yoga at home, low impact workouts by following YouTube videos, go for walks around your neighborhood or walk on a treadmill if you have one in it. And if you're concerned about going outside. Now, here's something that I encourage everyone to do. Everybody right now can do something meaningful, something meaningful. Another contributor uh, to feelings of loneliness can be a loss of a sense of meaning. If you are finding that you are not just bored, but that you're losing your sense of self, then a loss of meaning might be affecting you. Mm, I want to say I was in Cubs Den. Yes, I think I was in Cubs Den. That is another YouTube channel. And she was talking about um, kind of losing your sense of purpose. And I resonated with that because even though I'm staying extremely busy right now and I'm doing something that I enjoy, day in and day out of sitting at home, uh, it start all the days are starting to kind of melt into one long day. Uh, I am kind of in the same room every day because I'm working on my computer and I have had that thought, honestly, if I'm honest with you, I've had that thought, what is the purpose? What is the meaning of all this? Day in, day out, I'm in the same house, in the same room, in the same chair, doing the same thing. And I I have started to kind of had a loss of sense of meaning. And so hopefully this will help me as well. If you're finding that you're not just bored, but you also are losing your sense of self, then a loss of meaning might be affecting you. All of us want to feel like we belong and that our life has importance, which is why incorporating meaningful activities into each day is important. Doing something meaningful each day, even if, even if only for a short period, will give you a sense of purpose and identity. Only you know what will create meaning in your life. But below are some ideas to get you started. Sign up for an online course and do a little bit of work each day. Create a family tree using genealogy websites. Sign up to be an online volunteer through the United Nations. And there's a link there. Uh, Here's another point to do. Connect with others. Perhaps the best thing you can do to combat loneliness during this period of isolation is to connect with others in non-traditional ways. While you may not be able to visit with family and friends in person, that does not mean that you cannot connect. I can attest to this. My sister and I, there's like a 16 year difference between us. Totally different generations, totally different, totally different people. Even though we are siblings, uh, we've in the past not really spent that much time together, not even on the phone. But the last couple of weeks, my sister and I, I love you, dear sister. Uh, We have really reconnected in a basic way, but it's a way that I've just hadn't really done before. 
Uh, and that's uh, the Facebook Messenger. Facebook Messenger is been around for a while, but I just don't use it that often because I'm just not a social person like that. <laughs> but I'm glad that she has been reaching out to me because we've caught up more in the past week or two than we have in years. Family and friends is the next part here. Can you think of any out-of-the-box ways to stay in contact with friends and family? If you are comfortable using technology, there are numerous ways you can stay in touch. If you prefer more traditional ways of communicating, there are still options for you. Below are some ideas to stay in touch with your loved ones. Send a handwritten letter or postcard. Call someone on the telephone, particularly on days you are feeling lonely. Place calls using video chat. Services like FaceTime or Zoom. Post on social media or respond to others' posts on social media. Stay in touch by texting or instant messenger. And then we have the online method. In addition to staying in touch with family and friends, you can also combat loneliness by participating in online exchanges with other people around the world. These don't need to necessarily be your online friends but rather those with whom you share something in common and you communicate online. Below are some examples of online connections that you can make. Joining and participating in Facebook groups about topics that you are interested in. Signing up for online forums about your hobbies or interests. Joining and playing in multiplayer games such as Word Feud. Signing up for online sports games like fantasy football. And joining quarantine chat? What? A service specifically set up to help people during connect during this time. I didn't know that. So I will make sure that I put the link to this website in the description. So you go here, go back here, and you can check out some of these links. Find sources of comfort. Finding ways to give yourself comfort even when you're feeling lonely can help you to improve your mental health. Below are some ideas of comfort measures that you can take even if you are alone. Give yourself a foot massage or use a foot spa. Take a bath. Focus on your pet. Cook healthy comfort food. Watch your favorite TV show or read favorite books. Have a cup of herbal tea. Chamomile will help you relax. Light scented candles. Lavender will help to reduce stress. And practice sleep hygiene. Make sure you are getting enough rest. Create something. There's a reason why artists enjoy becoming swept away by their work. Expressing yourself through creative means can be therapeutic, whether it involves painting, writing, dancing, etc. If you find it hard to express what you're feeling, channeling your feelings into creating something can be cathartic. If you don't know, cathartic is like that light bulb that goes off in your head when you just get that mental breakthrough, that aha moment. That's what cathartic means. In addition, when you create something, you enter the creative magic zone, which can be a form of meditation in itself. I totally agree. Yep, I've been there. Below are a few list of projects that you could try. Writing projects. Practice writing in a journal every day. Take up hand lettering or calligraphy. Start a daily blog journaling your experiences for others to read. Uh, write poetry or haiku. Write short stories or start that novel you've always wanted to write. Oh, trust me, you guys, I will be starting my book. I told you guys I'm going to write a book this year. It's going to be, it's going to happen. They've got art projects that you can work on too. Complete a paint by number project, start a needlework, knitting or crochet project, compile a photo album that you can share later with others, work on an adult coloring book, take up a new hobby like jewelry making, take up origami. There is another lady that I've been watching on YouTube. Um, her name is Miss Tina. But her channel name is actually Crafts by the Rose. And she crochets. She she knits. And so I will put her description, uh, her link in the description as well. In case you um, maybe don't know how to crochet or knit. Or maybe it's something you haven't done in a while and you want to pick up some tips so you can get back into it. Home projects. Choose a space in your home and start an organizing project. Choose a room in your home and redecorate by moving things around or moving things from other rooms. If you're having trouble coming up with projects, focus on the ones that you can do with what, what you already have on hand. Most of us will have a notebook, paper, printer, and access to the internet. And using those few basic tools, you're sure to find something online to get you started. You could even focus on culinary arts and focus on cooking or baking projects. Yes, dear sister of mine, if you're listening, I have my butter sitting out. It has been 
uh, thawing out, not thawing out, but softening. And I think I am going to make those cookies that you kept teasing me with during the Facebook, uh, Facebook messenger. They look so good. Uh, distract yourself. Another way to boost your mental health is to find healthy distractions. This might come in the form of reading, watching shows, listening to music, or finding other activities that interest you. Below are some ideas to help. Read. I know some of you don't like to read, but read. Go back and reread some of your favorite childhood books. Join an online book club like the ones at Goodreads. Give yourself a reading challenge by choosing a list of books you've always wanted to read or a list based on the theme. For example, books all set in places you've wanted to visit. Read books of poetry if you find it too hard to concentrate on longer books. Read magazines on topics that you that interest you. You, you guys know uh, last week or the week before, I was reading my tax magazine. Yes, I read my tax magazine online for anybody who was interested in learning about taxes. And I learned some new things that I didn't know about. You can also listen to audiobooks through services like Audible or Scribd if you struggle to read or if you have vision problems. And this is probably some of people's favorites. Watch TV and movies. Watch TED Talks on YouTube about topics that interest you. Funny story. Okay, so you guys know like nowadays there's tape on the floor of different uh, shopping departments and stores and it helps us to practice social distancing. Well, my favorite store, Target, you know, the one with the red bullseye, they have red dots on the floor <laughs> where you're supposed to stand six feet of, six feet of, away from people. And as I was looking down at my red dot, I looked around at the other people and I said, does anybody feel like giving a TED talk right now? <laughs> Nobody knew what I was talking about, but one lady smiled at me and she said, yeah, I watched them too. <laughs> True story. Uh, you can watch a series of movies on a theme, like comedy movies will actually help to ease your stress. Watch a television series on Netflix. Watch documentaries on topics you've wanted to catch up on. Listen to a podcast on topics you like. You can create or listen to music. Go back and listen to your favorite songs from when you were a teenager. Ooh, yeah, 90s playlist sounds awesome right about now. <clears throat> <clears throat> Create a playlist of happy songs and listen to those. Play an instrument such as the piano or guitar. And here are some other fun ideas. Take a virtual tour. Many museums offer digital access to their collections, including the Louvre and the Guggenheim. You know what that reminds me of? I actually went downtown Fort Worth and I went to the stockyards and I got some footage to show you guys. So keep reminding me to edit that, you guys. I've, got, I've actually have some fun stuff for you guys to look at. I have footage to put together for a virtual tour, so keep an eye out for that. You can play games that engage your mind, such as Sudoku, so, su, I can never say this word, Sudoku, Sudoku, crossword puzzles, solitaire, or online chess. Plan for the future. Hey guys, this is going to be over. One day, this is going to be over. Are you ready for when it is over? Are you prepared to get back to business when it's time to go back? You should be planning for the future. While it might seem like this loneliness will last forever, there will come a time that you'll be back to your usual routine. One way to feel less alone now is to make plans for the future or do things that help you focus on the future. Below are some ideas. Make a future list of all the things you want to do. Order online and plant some spring bulbs. Plan a fun event for when you are out of isolation. Make a bucket list of things to do in your lifetime. Make a goals list for some area of your life. And practice self-compassion. Most importantly, practice self-compassion during this difficult time. If you find yourself saying things like, I shouldn't be feeling this way, or pushing away difficult emotions, this will only make your loneliness persist. Instead of resisting your feelings, instead... Find ways to be accepting of them as coming and going. This helps to take away their power and ease your unhappiness. Remember that your feelings will change. If you're still struggling, try practicing guided meditation following a YouTube video. I've also got one of those. If I can remember to put that in the link, uh, that link in the description, I'll put that in there too. It's actually... Um, Progressive muscle relaxation. So if you're having trouble falling asleep, this is a progressive muscle relaxation video that I made based off of um, another time in therapy where we were learning some relaxation 
um, exercises. Next is show compassion to others. It might seem counterintuitive, but if you are struggling yourself, sometimes offering help to others who are feeling lonely can help make you feel less lonely yourself. Make a phone call, send a text, send a letter, or comment on someone's social media post. Be supportive and offer words of encouragement. And now coping as an older adult. Older adults, meaning people aged 65 and over, may be particularly susceptible to loneliness during this time. This group is most likely to self-isolate due to fear of infection, while also potentially having fewer supports in place to feel less lonely. The baby boomers in particular may be the most affected by what's going on. Older adults can stave off a loneliness during this time in the following ways. Mama, are you listening? This is for you. Make phone calls to relatives on a regular schedule so that they can check in with you and learn about your needs. Ask for help from family members when you need it and be specific about how they can help. Check to see if your community offers specific shopping hours for seniors so that you can shop for food during low-risk times when absolutely necessary. And here's a final, final word from uh, Very Well. If you find yourself with very poor mental health while isolated during this time and you're not able to pull yourself out of those feelings of anxiety, depression, or fear, it is important to reach out for help. Consider calling a crisis line or an online therapy service to find out about options. And while it's normal to feel afraid and lonely at a time like this, worsening mental health could indicate the need for outside help. So I hope this video, follow-up video, was helpful for you. Again, this is actually part two of the video I made on feeling alone, uh, coping with the isolation, fighting loneliness, once in a lifetime, uh, what did I put on there? Once in a lifetime experience. That is a 16 minute video. And yes, it is going to allude to a follow-up video. That would be this one here. Also, I will be sharing the links to those channels that I find helpful and I find valuable. And I hope that you find them valuable as well. Make sure you leave a like on this video. Every time you like one of my videos, it brings us a little closer to the surface of the YouTube ocean and helps others to find me more easily. You can also share out this video using the share button on your device uh, and share me out by word of mouth. And if you are not already subscribed, I would be so happy to have you here on my channel. I do make videos on mental health and wellness, as well as business and entrepreneurship. And if it's your kind of thing, I read the Bible every morning, 7 a.m. Central Standard Time. I really do hope that this website helps you out. If so, share it out. I will see you guys in the next video. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching and don't forget to follow me on social media. Now, let me know what you think about this next upcoming video.